What's going on guys? So this block of instruction is going to be going over IFTA and fuel prices. So IFTA or the International Fuel Tax Agreement, this worked out kind of between states. Uh, states file their own. So if you live in Texas, which is the forms that I have here, um, you'll do those forms. If you live in another state, you'll do those forms appropriately. Uh, as far as Prime goes, if Prime is filing your IFTA, it's going to be done through Missouri Forms. So, but there's pretty much one uh, rate table that we use that's put out quarterly. This is the first quarter from this year. Uh, usually, IFTA is filed quarterly. Uh, Prime does theirs monthly. So, in your settlements, you'll see where you get your returns back or your money's due. With that being said, a lot of people kind of have the misconception that, and it's still happening, that you need to get fuel in every state that you drive through. That's really incorrect. Um, no matter which way you go, you're going to pay fuel tax. You're not skirting the tax either. You're going to pay it at the pump or they're just going to bill you later pretty much is kind of how it works out. So. A lot of people also have the misconception that getting fuel in California, you know, places that are typically higher fuel tax rates and the, the price is higher, that they should go and not get fuel there to get fuel before they get in the state and then get out and not get fuel. That's another uh, myth and misconception because if, even if you don't get fuel there, you're still going to be charged a fuel tax. So i.e. if you if you went let's say I, I worked did this spreadsheet already from New Mexico to California across three states 300 miles in each one to kind of make it simple uh, if you went from New Mexico and you didn't get fuel until you went to California so you went through New Mexico Arizona and you arrived in California you still owe New Mexico and Arizona fuel tax if you didn't get uh, fuel in those states now the part that's going to help you is if you got fuel in California let's say let me just get kind of into this form um, that's pretty much what's going to help so you guys see exactly let's get into this all right so this is the uh, form from Texas hopefully this is very legible and it's coming across legibly but obviously we're doing diesel here uh, total if to miles Usually this is on a quarterly basis, so you'll have more than just this one page. Uh, every state you drive in, uh, if you're using a Qualcomm, we track that mileage via the Qualcomm. Uh, if you're in more traditional type setting where you're doing probably paper logs, uh, you're going to have to track the miles through each state. So every state line you cross, you know, you need to know your mileage, your in-in mileage, and you get in mileage to know the correct one. But for the sake of this form, to, to kind of go over this, as you see, we have 900 total IFTA miles. That's all the miles the truck travel during this given period. All right. Uh, total non IFTA miles, that would be any off-duty driving, um, driving through local municipalities because most if there is, is mainly highway driving so the, the Qualcomm kind of simplifies that for you total miles obviously this is between these two um, and then the total gallons purchased for that time period so you have to save all your fuel receipts if you purchased 115 gallons like I have here and you have 900 miles you average it out to a uh, mile per gallon of 7.82 this is the bread and butter here so not only does saving uh, miles per gallon you know help you every week in your settlements but it also helps you on your IFTA because the higher the number the less fuel tax you owe all right so let's without further ado down here in New Mexico we traveled 300 miles 300 of those were taxable and uh, with that fuel economy of 7.82 miles per gallon you do that divided by 300 and you get that you would have had 38 all right, you would have to have purchased 38 gallons of diesel in New Mexico to drive these 300 miles. Does that make sense? But we actually didn't purchase any diesel, so here we 38s carried over, and their tax rate is 21 cents. Now I got that tax rate. I need to make this camera not turn off. I don't like that. Uh, these are the tax rate forms that I was referring to. And we're going to go down to uh, New Mexico's to kind of show you. Just save you the special diesel tax. All right. 
So New Mexico's rate is here at 21 cents all right, per gallon. That's their tax rate on the fuel, not the, the price of the fuel. All right, so we got 21 cents here. Uh, obviously, no credits due because uh, we owe them money because we didn't purchase any fuel. So that's going to be zero. And then 7.98 here is due. So you pretty much take the 21 cents times those 38 gallons of fuel and the $7.98 is what's owed to New Mexico. All right, so Arizona pretty much the same way, traveled 300 miles, didn't buy any fuel in their state. So with the fuel economy of 7.82, we would have had to use 38 gallons to travel 300 miles. All right, uh, didn't purchase any fuel, so we owe them $9.88. California, 300 miles, all that's taxable. 38 gallons would have been used to travel those 300 miles. We purchased 100 gallons, so we have an offset of negative 62. And the tax rate you see here is 45 cents. That's significantly higher than the other two states. So they owe us $27.90 only because we purchased more fuel than what we actually needed. So when you come down to the bottom of this form, you see we're actually getting back $10.04. All right. So hopefully that starts giving you guys kind of a picture of what I mean. Uh, Pennsylvania actually scored the most points in racking up a fuel tax rate of 64 cents. So they actually have the highest right now as of last quarter. Uh, this quarter is due out, I think it's June, uh, like the second or third, something like that. Um, but 64 cents was Pennsylvania's, Oklahoma 13 cents with the cheapest. Those kind of go hand in hand with each other because Oklahoma, you go to Oklahoma City, that's where we generally see the cheaper fuel prices. So if you're an employee of Prime or any other um, subsidiary or other company, you know that you do your macro 27 and you get the best fuel stop uh, pretty much sent to you, but we also have an app that's available. I'm not going to, this app is proprietary to Prime, so I'm not going to really get into the specifics as far as, uh, you know, the prices and whatnot, because we have to, you know, protect our integrity with our customers that we use for fuel, but pretty much that's what we use here. Uh, it's got all the states, you kind of click the state and you get the prices, all right, you know, just for example, you know, right now, we, we don't pay the pump at the pump price. Uh, the price that you see on the pump is not the price we pay. We get a discounted price. And it's not a rebate where you get, because some people offer rebates where you buy the pump price. Let's say the pump price is $2, and the rebate price will be like $1.75. So every gallon you pump, you'll get $0.25 cents back in a rebate. Maybe a month from now, two months, what have you. We get an instant discount. So you don't really have that to worry about. But all in all, just to kind of, you know, get your minds to thinking about IFTA and because um, if, you, if you're uh, working with Prime, you're not going to be following your own IFTA. You know, that's going to be more down the road, you know, actual, a little bit more responsibility, actual owner operating. Um, not so much as being leased to a company, but pretty much operating under your own authorities when you'll probably start following your own IFTAs, depending on where you are. Some other companies still require you to follow your own IFTAs, and that's on you. Um, but we, we here at Prime, we do file your IFTA for you, so you don't have that to worry about. But you just kind of start looking at fuel taxes uh, and buying fuel. So you don't, like me personally, if you go to California, like a lot of people sit and say, oh, I don't want to buy fuel in California, you know. Yeah, you'll save money in your pocket immediately by not buying fuel in California, but on the back end, you're going to end up uh, still owing the money regardless. So either way you go, you're going to pay them that price. Uh, it really doesn't matter in my opinion which way you do it either you're going to have money in your pocket now or later I don't live paycheck to paycheck so it's not a big deal I get fuel when it's convenient not when you know I, I don't get into well, a lot of people you'll hear sit and say well, well I don't want to get fuel uh, a lot of fuel before the settlement goes in before time goes in on Tuesday and you know like I, I don't look at that as a big deal either to me personally because the fuel's still going to be in your truck for your next run. Um, so let's say you're in Oklahoma and it's Tuesday. You're in Oklahoma City West. You know, that's the cheapest price in Oklahoma that you're going to get probably over at TA. Now, that being said, are you going to, one, put a little bit of fuel in your truck to get to where you're going? If Let's say if you're going to somewhere like Nebraska, all right, you and I both know how high Nebraska's fuel is. 
Are you just gonna nickel and dime yourself to Nebraska, or you're gonna go ahead and fill your truck up? I don't know what you know, just, these are decisions that you guys have to think about and you guys have to make. So think about that stuff. That's if in a nutshell. Fuel prices in a nutshell. I uh, will do another video shortly here about uh, route planning and fuel because that's an, another big one is route planning and fuel.